Praise God to be with you today. This is Pastor Tom. Welcome you to another study in the Word. We're talking about the baptism in the Holy Ghost, one of my favorite subjects. I want you to take notes and uh, go over these scriptures in your mind because if you're studying for ministry especially, you want to be able to lead people into the baptism in the Holy Ghost. And so you can give them a, the same Bible study I'm giving you. Just go over the scriptures with them. And you'll find out that this works very well. People, faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. People receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And uh, uh, it's a second greatest blessing that you'll ever receive in your life from the Lord Jesus. The first one being salvation. The second one being the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Um, we looked at, in our last session at the Jewish church and how it started and found out that all of them received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. We found out that all of them spoke with other tongues. We found out that this was God's will for every Christian of every single nation, of every single denomination, forever. Sorry about that. And so, that includes you, that includes me, that includes anybody that uh, gets born again. Now we're going to look at the second uh, place where it talks about this in Acts chapter 8 today. So I want you to turn to Acts chapter 8 and one of the best things you can do, and I don't do this um, for sake of time, I don't have very much time with you on these sessions, but you should pray. Come pray it up to these sessions. Spend some time worshiping God before you come and, and get into the Word so that uh, you can get the full understanding of what's going on here. In Acts um, chapter 8, we want to look down here at verse 5. Acts chapter 8, and we'll start at verse number 5. Acts 8, 5. Let's look at what it says here. Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them. And the people with one accord gave heed unto the things which Philip spake, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. For unclean spirits, crying with loud voices, came out of many that were possessed with them, and many taken with palsies, or were crippled, and they that were lame were healed. And there was great joy in the city. But there was a certain man called Simon, which before time in the same city used sorcery and bewitched the people of Samaritan, giving out that himself was something great, to whom they all gave heed, from the least to the greatest, saying, This man is the great power of God. And to him they had regard, because that long time he had bewitched them with his sorceries. But when they believed Philip, concerning, preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God, <coughs> and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women. Then Simon himself believed also, and when he was baptized, he continued with Philip, and wondering, beholding the miracles and signs which were done. Now when the apostles which were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent unto them Peter and John, who when they were come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost. For he had yet not fallen, he was not yet fallen upon none of them, only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then they laid their hands on them, and they received the Holy Ghost. And when Simon saw that through the laying on of hands, the, apost the apostles' hands, the Holy Ghost was given, he offered them money, saying, Give me also this power, that whomsoever I lay hands on, he may receive the Holy Ghost. But Peter said unto them, Thy money perish with thee, because thou hast taught that the gift of God may be purchased with thy money. Verse 21, Thou hast neither part nor lot in this matter, for thy heart is not right in the sight of God. Now, here we see the second place where this comes up. In the book of Acts, in, in Acts chapter 2, we studied that the, Jew, the Jews at Jerusalem just received the baptism of the Holy Ghost without anybody laying hands on them. In fact, nobody touched them. That's how I received it. Um, here we see that the apostles came down after they had received Christ and been baptized and prayed for them that they might receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I first want to point out to you, this must be important. 
why would the apostles come all the way down there from Jerusalem, you know, to Samaria, having heard that they had received Christ, uh, and the first thing they did is lay hands on them to receive the baptism in the Holy Ghost. It must have been very important. And you'll find that it is, when you look into the book of Acts, very important. But somebody says, well, Pastor Tom, that's true. They did. There was a second experience here. That's clear. But it does not say they spoke in tongues. Well, I disagree with you. Uh, unfortunately, sometimes when the Bible is translated, it's not translated maybe as it should be. Uh, in the English Bible here, when it says, when, 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 when Simon uh, the sorcerer was watching them lay hands on them, he saw something. And he, he said, hey, I, I, you know, I want to be able to do that. You know, I want to be able to do what you're doing. Uh, give me money. You know, here's some money. Give me the power so I can do that. They said, you, you know, <laughs> they said, your, your heart's not right with God. You, you're, you know, after money. Um, but what did he see if it wasn't them speaking in tongues? What did he hear if it wasn't them speaking in tongues? Well, the truth of the matter is where it says here, um, he has no lot nor place in this matter. If you look down here uh, at verse, let me read it to you because I want you to see this. Let's see. Verse 21, notice this. But Peter said unto him, Thy money perish with thee, because thou hast thought that the gift of God may be purchased with thy money. Thou hast neither part nor lot in this matter. You see the word matter there? Actually, in the, if you go back to the concordance, the English concordance, that, that word matter is translated many other places in the Bible utterance. Thou hast no... Thou ha, it could be translated translated very easily this way. Thou hast no part nor lot in this utterance. What, what utterance? Well, they were speaking in tongues. Now we know they were because of church history. We know that they were and they practiced this because it's very clear in church history also. So here we also see them, the second act of God here, giving them the Holy Ghost. We see them uttering or speaking in other tongues. And so the half the, the, the Samaritans were half-breed Jews. They were Jews that, that mixed with um, what was considered at the time, you know, pagan nations. And God had told them, don't mix with those pagan nations. And they had mixed with them, and so they were worshiping idols, and they were into the occult world, and all these kind of things were going on, see. And so the Jews didn't have anything to do with them. But, but Jesus told them, go into all the world, preach the gospel to every, uh, uh, to every uh, creature, you know. And he, he said, go to Jerusalem and, and then Samaria and then, you know, to the other. Finally, they got over here and they went to Samaria. The same thing took place, praise God, on these half Jews as did with the full Jews in Jerusalem. Then God, we see God dealing and starting the church, the Gentile church, in Acts chapter 10. So what happened to them? Well, I don't want to get into the whole thing because it, it takes too long, but I'll tell you the story. Peter was praying and fasting, and uh, he was sitting up on a roof somewhere, and God gave him a vision of a bunch of uh, unclean animals that, that were not allowed to be eaten by the Jewish religion. And uh, a voice came to him and said, Kill, eat. And he said, Lord, you know I'd never eaten anything like that. I've, I've been a good Jew boy all my life. And uh, I would never eat anything like that, unclean. He said, and then God said, but what I have clean, I've called clean, it's not unclean anymore. And so <laughs> we see Peter having this vision, and, show, and, and, and God's saying, go preach to the Gentile church. Now, the Gentiles is all of us who weren't Jews, born Jewish. So here we see God deal with the Jews. We see God deal with the half-Jews, and now he's going to deal with the Gentiles. So Peter goes, and he starts preaching the gospel. Let's pick it up here at verse uh, 34 of Acts chapter 10. Acts chapter 10, verse 34. Then Peter opened his mouth and said, Of a truth I perceive, that God is no respecter of persons, and he's not. He's not a respecter of persons. Jewish person is no better than anybody else. You know, a Pakistani person is no better than anybody else. 
but we're you know an American is no better than anybody else. We're all the same in God's eyes. He's no respecter of a person, but in every nation, he that feareth him and worketh righteousness is accepted of him. The word which God sent unto the children of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all. That word I say you know, which was published throughout all Judea and began from Galilee after the baptism which John preached. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power, who went around good, doing good and healing all those who were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. And we are witnesses of all these things which he did, both in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem, whom they slew and hanged on a tree. Him God raised up the third day, showing him openly, not to all the people, but unto a witness chosen before God, even to us, who did eat and drink with him after he rose from the dead. And he commanded us to preach unto the people and to testify that it is he which or is ordained of God to be the judge of quick and the dead. To him give all the prophets witness that through the name, through his name, whoever believes in him shall receive remission of sins. And notice this. So Peter's preaching. He hasn't he hasn't finished his sermon yet, but he got to the point and told him, if you believe in Jesus, your sins will be remitted. Now notice, verse 44, While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all of them that heard the word. <laughs> and they of the circumcision which believed were astonished, as many as came with Peter, because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. How do they know? Verse 46 tells us, For they heard them speak with tongues, and magnify God, and then answered Peter, Can any man forbid water, that these should not be baptized, which have received the Holy Ghost as well? And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. Then prayed they him to tarry with them certain days. So here we see the Gentile church starting. It even started in a greater and more dynamic way than the Jewish church did. The Jewish church is sitting there and they're waiting, and waiting on God. He had told them to wait for the promise. The promise came. They spoke in tongues. Here, we see Peter not even getting done with his message yet. <laughs> While they were, he was still preaching, the Holy Ghost came down and they began to speak with other tongues. Beautiful. Hallelujah. A sovereign and powerful act of God here to make a point. The point being again that all who receive the true baptism in the Holy Ghost will speak with other tongues as the Holy Spirit gives them the ability. Now, so we saw the the Jewish church receive, the half-Jewish church receive, and here the Gentile church receive. And remember, the Bible says that this promise is for you, your children, and for as many as the Lord shall call. So that comes to today. Never passed away. People say it does, but it hasn't. I received, my wife and I have laid hands on uh, almost 10,000 people personally and seen them speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them the ability. So... We see how awesome that is. Now, let's look at another thing. You go back to Acts chapter 9. I want to take a quick look here at the Apostle Paul. The Apostle Paul, the great Apostle Paul. I want to see what happened to him. Acts chapter 9, verse 1. Let's read through. And Saul, later to become known as Paul, Yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, went unto the high priest, and desired of him letters to Damascus, to the, the synagogues, that if he was found, of, of, found any of the way, whether they men or women, he might uh, bring him bound unto Jerusalem. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly there shined around about him a light from heaven. And he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting now me? It's very interesting here because he doesn't say, why are you persecuting my church? He said, why are you persecuting me? See, if you persecute a Christian, you're persecuting Jesus himself. It's not a very smart thing to do. Verse 5, And he said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And he, trembling and astonishing, said, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? And the Lord said unto him, Arise, and go into the city, and it shall be told thee what thou must do. 
And the, and the man which journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing his voice, not seeing no man. And Saul arose from the earth, and when his eyes were opened, he saw no man. But they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. And he was there three days without sight, neither did he eat or drink. And there was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias. And to him said the Lord in a, in a vision, Ananias. And he said, Behold, here I am, Lord. And the Lord said unto him, Arise, and go into the street which is called Straight, and inquire the house of Judah for one called Saul or t of Tarsus. For behold, he prayeth, and hath seen in a vision a man named Ananias coming and putting his hands on him, that he might receive his sight. Then Ananias answered and said, Lord, I have heard of many of, uh, many of this man, how much evil he has done to saints at Jerusalem. And here he has authority from the chief priest to bind all that come up and call on his name. But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me to bear my name before the Gentiles and the kings and the children of Israel. For I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. And I, Ananias went his way and entered into the house, and putting his hands on him, said, Brother Saul, the Lord, even Jesus, that appeared unto thee in the way, as thou hast comest, has sent me that thou mightest receive thy sight, and, notice, be filled with the Holy Ghost. And immediately there fell from his eyes, as it was scales, and he received his sight, uh, forthwith and arose and was baptized. Now, isn't that interesting? You say, well, yeah, the Apostle Paul was baptized, uh, and then, uh, or baptized in the Holy Ghost too, yes, the Apostle Paul was, of course. See, this was something that uh, this man Ananias did. He went and laid hands on Paul. See, this refutes the argument that only the apostles can lay hands on people who receive the Holy Ghost. I wanted to point this out. If you are just anybody, any Christian can lay hands on another Christian to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost and speak with other tongues. Ananias was not an apostle. He was just a servant of the Lord. And so we see here. Now, we know that Paul spoke in tongues because in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, just flip over there. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, Paul was the biggest advocate of tongues ever, except for maybe me. I'm, I'm pretty strong on it too. But Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 18, notice this. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 18. I thank my God I speak with tongues more than you all. Out of the Amplified Bible, it actually says it this way. I thank God, that I speak in strange tongues or languages more than any of you and all of you put together. Now, when I first saw that, I thought, my goodness sakes, Paul, here's Paul who wrote half of the New Testament, three quarters of the New Testament, if you think he wrote Hebrews, I believe he wrote Hebrews, so three quarters of the New Testament, at least half for sure. And he says, <clears throat> I thank God I speak in tongues more than y'all. Then we see another place here in, in, Acts, in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 4. Why did Paul do that? Well, we see verse 2 of 1 Corinthians chapter 14. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 2, and 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 4. Verse 2 says, out of the Amplified, For one who speaks in an unknown tongue speaks not to men, but to God. For no man understands or catches his meaning, because in the Holy Spirit he utters secret truth, and hidden things not obvious to understand. So you're praying supernaturally to God. My goodness sakes, right there. That ought to get you excited about uh, speaking in tongues. Then in verse 4, he says this. He who speaks in a strange tongue edifies and improves himself. But he who prophesies, interpreting the divine will and purpose and teaching with inspiration, edifies and improves the church and promotes growth in Christian wisdom, piety, holiness, and happiness. But notice the first part of that. He who speaks in a strange tongue edifies and improves himself. He who speaks in a tongue edifies and improves himself. Let me ask you a question. Do you want to be edified? Do you want to be improved? Well, God has given us the way to do that. It's by speaking in tongues. The more you speak in tongues, the more spiritually you grow. The more spiritually you receive revelation. The more you'll grow in your prayer life. The more you'll understand the word. The more you'll grow in character the more you'll grow in grace and the ability to worship God and the ability to flow in the gifts of the Spirit and the ability to hear from God, the ability to be led by the Spirit. We could go down a long list, ladies and gentlemen. You'll build yourself up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. This is vital. 
absolutely vital for every single believer. And believe me when I say that, that includes you and anybody who's listening to me. So, it's very important. So Paul here shows us the importance of speaking with tongues, and Paul spoke with tongues. Now, let's go to the other place, talks about it, the only other place in the book of Acts. Just want to make sure you get it, Acts chapter 19. Acts chapter 19, I believe, and we'll be looking at verse 1. And let's go through this now. Now, this shows us Paul later on in his ministry on a missionary journey. Verse 1, And it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus and finding certain disciples. Now, what was the very first thing that Paul said to these disciples that he found? He said unto them, Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? Apparently, the, uh, receiving the baptism of the Holy Ghost is something that happens after one believes. Can you see that? Sure. And they said unto him, We have not so heard much whether they be any Holy Ghost. They didn't. They never, they never heard about this. And he said unto them, How have you been baptized? He said unto them, John's baptism. Then said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that uh, they should believe on him who come after him, that is, Jesus Christ. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came upon them, and they spake with tongues and prophesied. And all the men were about twelve. So here we see again, in Acts chapter 2, the Jewish church received the baptism in the Holy Ghost. When they, when they did, they spoke with other tongues. In Acts chapter 8, when the half-Jews received Jesus, they spoke with tongues. The, the apostles came down and laid hands on him. In Acts chapter 10, when God started speaking to the Gentile church, Peter was up preaching. Nobody touched him. The Holy Spirit just came on them, and they began to speak with other tongues. When the Apostle Paul got knocked off the donkey on the, on, his, on the road to Damascus, he was sent a man named Ananias who laid his hands on him, and he received the baptism of the Holy Ghost, and of course later we know he spoke with tongues more than you all. Then in Acts chapter 19, on the missionary journey that Paul was on, the very first thing he asked them, Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believed? Many, many, many thousands of people, I've asked that question. And I have to ask that question of you right now. If you have already received the baptism of the Holy Ghost, I commission you and I ask you and I plead with you. Go forth. Ask that question to people. If they don't know, take them through a Bible study and then get them baptized in the Holy Ghost. It's not hard to do. Just take them through these scriptures. Lay hands on them and begin to pray. And... Uh, if you haven't received the baptism in the Holy Ghost, well, there's an old saying, there's no better time than now. So I'm going to ask you to right now put your Bible down if you have not received the baptism in the Holy Spirit. I want to pay, ask you to put your books down and just look at me right now. Pay attention to me. Now, we're going to talk more about this as we go because actually I want to make sure that, um, that everybody here knows exactly how to, to do this, but I'm just going to say this to you, that to receive the baptism in the Holy Ghost is really very simple, because we know it's for everybody, because remember, the Bible clearly said that it's for you, your children, for as many as the Lord will call. Mark chapter 11, verse 24, says, What things soever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you shall have them. The Holy Ghost has already been given. We saw that in, uh, in the book of Acts. The Holy Ghost has been given to the church. We don't need to wait to receive the Holy Ghost. We receive the Holy Ghost because the Holy Ghost is a gift. The baptism in the Holy Ghost is a gift. Just like you receive Jesus, you do it by faith. You receive Jesus by faith, and now you receive the Holy Ghost by faith. And this is very important because we must understand that as we look at these things and, and as we, we go through these things we find out that faith is very important in anything 
receiving by faith is is very simple. Let me explain it to you. Um, when I first heard this, I wanted to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost, but for some reason in my mind, I don't know why, I had the I came to the conclusion that you know to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost, God was going to make me speak or he's going to take me over, or he's going to shake me, or he's going to anoint me with a supernatural anointing, and all of a sudden I was just going to, you know, I was going to get so excited, I'd just start blurting out in tongues, and none of that, that's not how it works. I, 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 in fact, I got down on my knees in my room, and I said, Lord, I raised my hand to the Lord, and I said, according to Mark 11:24, I believe I received the baptism in the Holy Ghost, and I expect to speak with other tongues. And nothing happened. I did that three times, expecting something to happen to me to make me speak in tongues, but nothing happened. So I went back to the Lord and I said, Lord, what's the problem here? I know that, uh, you know, you want me to have this. It's very clear in the Bible. It's for me. It's for all of our generations, for as many as the Lord will call. What's the problem? So the Lord said, go back and look at Acts chapter 2. So I went back and I looked at Acts chapter 2 and it says, and I read Acts chapter 2 and it says, and they all began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them the utterance or the ability. And I saw it. I saw that it was the Holy Spirit who gave them the ability. They had to do the speaking, but the Holy Spirit gave them the tongue, the words. So it wasn't the Holy Spirit who totally took them over. They had to yield to the Holy Spirit. They had to cooperate with the Holy Spirit. They had to be co-workers together with God on this thing. I saw it. I said, Lord, I have to open my mouth and begin to speak. You'll give me the, the words. That's exactly what it was. So I went back to the Lord. I said, okay, Lord. And I lifted my hand again. And I said, Lord, I believe I received this now. And I'm going to open my mouth and I'm going to speak with tongues. And I just, when I, when I said, thank you, Lord, for this, and I just said, now, and I just started. I went, In fact, I just got a couple words. But, I mean, it just started going. And I prayed like that for a while. See, I'm talking to you in English, which is my native language. Nobody's forcing me to do that. Now I'm going to talk in tongues. Nobody forced me to do that. The only difference is, every time I speak with tongues, I do it by faith. I open my mouth and just start talking. Sometimes God will give me a different tongue. See, that was different. That was a different tongue. So every time I open my mouth up, it's not tongue. It's not one tongue. It's tongues. Divers are in different kinds of tongues. So I can, every time I open my mouth up, I'll never know. Some, it's going to come out. Normally it's the same one. But sometimes it'll be a different one. Sometimes I'm praying for somebody else. So, but there's tongues I do not know. This is the Lord just gives me the utterance. Now, he wants to do that to you. But you're going to have to cooperate with him. And the way you do that is you open up your mouth and you begin to speak. All right? You, you cannot speak in your own language. That's cheating. <laughs> That's not receiving the baptism of the Holy Ghost. So when we pray, you don't go, you know, thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord, thank you, Lord, in your own language. Don't do that. Okay? You can thank the Lord later. The Bible says when you pray in tongues, you'll thank God really well. That's what the Bible says. So our point here is we want to receive, and to receive we have to yield, and to yield you've got to begin to speak. So I started speaking like that, and then the devil does what he does to everybody. He hopped right up on my shoulder, and he began to chatter in my ear, that's just you, that's just gibberish, that's not real. And I, I started listening to that for a minute, and I know that every person that's ever received the baptism in the Holy Ghost, he does the same thing too. He's not, you know, he, he brings doubt. Whenever you have doubt about a Bible subject, it's always the devil. And uh, he started making me doubt that. So all of a sudden I caught him. I said, that's not God. That's the devil telling me that. So I just said to the devil out loud, 
I said, Devil, if you keep telling me that, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get my clock over here and I'm going to pray for a whole hour in tongues because the Bible says that it improves me. And I know you don't want me to be improved as a Christian. So you keep talking to me and I'm going to go. I warned him. And he kept talking to me. So I went and got, I was a man of my word, I went and got my watch, my clock. Actually, it was a little timer. Put it on for an hour. And I just started praying in tongues. Amo le mimi. Soko didn't feel anything. Was no big deal. Didn't. I didn't have lightning bolts hit me. I didn't have tons of fire come in. None of that. Just start praying. me, And I prayed for a whole hour. Actually, it felt pretty dry. Didn't have any feelings about it. It just, I knew I was doing it. After an hour, I, I, I quit. And the devil, you know what? He's pretty persistent sometimes. He came and sat on my shoulder again. And he, he said the same thing to me. That's just gibberish, you know. That's not real. Blah, blah, blah. It's just you faking it. I said, Devil, you keep telling me that, I'm going to get it for another hour. And he kept telling me that, so I went and I put it on for another hour. And I started praying again. i got to tell you something. As I began to pray that second hour, all of a sudden, gushers. I mean, it was amazing what began to happen. Just old mole me, she can begin to roll out of me. Pretty soon I was singing in tongues. I think I sang a bunch of songs. And by the time I was done, you know, I didn't even realize it was another hour was up. I felt so good. And I, I've been praying that way ever since. Now, I pray that way every day. I praise God that way every day. I'm going to pray for you. And I want to encourage you. Don't let the devil take you, talk you out of this. When you receive, and you will, you, you speak in tongues, you keep doing it. Just do it, do it, and do it. Even if it's just one or two words, just keep doing it. And you will come and you will flow. Okay, that's the way it works. So, now we're going to pray. So, I want you to bow your head and pray this prayer with me. Say, Heavenly Father, I want to thank you that I'm a Christian. I need this power from on high. I need the baptism in the Holy Ghost. And I believe this, that when Pastor Tom prays for me, and he counts to three. When he reaches three, I'm going to open my mouth and begin to speak with other tongues. And I promise you, I will pray this way every day for the rest of my life. Thank you, Lord, for your wonderful gift. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, I'm going to count to three, and then I'm going to say to you, receive the Holy Ghost. And when I do, one on, on three, I want you to open your mouth and begin to speak with the, your new language. No cheating now. Are you ready? One, two, three. On lo kule me si bikasha. Just begin to pray. That's right. Whatever comes out, just let it come out. God chooses whatever language. Keep praying that way. Come on. Let's pray together. Keep praying that way. Asikile shiade. Asungu patando karapo shapato singiti andosi kataso lamaso kiringi. Bosunguri yada baton kile mosha brakasi brukushi. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. Keep praying that way. Halamoso kutipiri kishima kukari. Songara patoke. Okay, okay, wait a second. Now see, you received. Don't let the devil talk you out of it now. You keep praying that way. In fact, now, see, I stopped you just for a minute to show you that you're in control of that. Every time you step out, the same thing will happen. Let's do it again. Right now, go. That's right, keep praying. Your language will be different than mine. Everybody's language is different. God gives us the language as He wills. Just keep praying. Praise God. Amen. Keep praying that way. And if you have any questions, uh, 
you can uh, either email me or go to your pastor and he'll help you with it there in, in Pakistan. Well, we're done with our, 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 uh, our uh, teaching today. Praise God. You know, it's so awesome. It's just so wonderful to, uh, to be with you. I, I appreciate you all joining me and uh, hope you continue to uh, come and hear the Word of God and study with me in this Bible school. Till next time, God bless you. We love you. Now go out and get somebody else filled. God bless you. Bye-bye.